Hello, people. My wife here with another version of Amiga Retro. It's been a while since I've done one because I've been busy working on the Ultimate Universe mod for Chris Jones Gaming. Um, so I'm going to make up with it for this one. Uh, and I'm going to split this particular episode into three segments. Part A, Part B, Part C. For the simple reason, the game I'm covering is the pinball series from Digital Illusions for the Amiga. And it started with this particular one, Pinball Dreams. That's what's going to be featured in this one. Part B and C will have Pinball Fantasies and Pinball Illusions, which were the sequels. All very good games in their own right. Although, well, I'll tell you why in a second. Now, Pinball Dreams and its subsequent sequels was a unique game for a pinball game at its time. Uh, developed in 1992 by Digital Illusions, like I said. The ball in the game moved according to reasonably realistic physics, which was unheard of back in them days. The game didn't feel restricted to using table elements, which would be possible uh, to build in, rea you know, in reality. So, it gave a little bit more realism, but also still, within reason, was restricted by, you know, the physics of the actual uh, machinery that you were playing it on. Uh, the game uh, Pinball Dreams has four tables, and each had a theme as do most real-life pinball machines, as many people know. Although the table Nightmare was nominally, nominally the most difficult. It usually gave out the highest scores of all, uh, of all though, due to bonuses such as double score, etc, etc, etc. Uh, unfortunately, the version of Pinball Dreams that was bundled with the Amiga 1200 had a bug which rendered the beatbox table, uh, its advanced features, useless, basically. Anyway, there were, like I said, there were four tables in the game, which you will see. Ignition, uh, which was themed around rocket launchers, planets, and space exploration. And uh, back in 2000, uh, the expert software port of this game, called Pinball 2000, uh, renamed that particular table to Rocket. So if you've played Pinball 2000, it's the same table as Ignition from this game. The second table in the game is Steel Wheel, which is themed around steam trains and the Old West. Pretty good table, I like that one. Uh, beatbox, uh, as its name implies, themed around the music industry, charts, bands, and tours, etc. Obviously, based around the culture of the 90s with regards to music, so it looks a bit dated, but still pretty good fun table to play. And then there was Nightmare, themed around graveyards, ghosts, demons, nightmares, and generally all things evil. Now, unlike the other tables in the game, the name of the table in the menu did not reflect the name displayed on the table itself. Graveyard, in Nightmare Table for example. Some ports of the game, most notably the Game Tech version of this game that was ported to the Game Boy, named this table Graveyard in the menu as well. In the community, gaming community, the pinball simulation world generally considered both Pinball Dreams and Pinball Fantasies cult games, and I have to admit they were, that's why I'm covering it. But the, as a trilogy, Pinball Fantasies, Dreams, and Illusions, which was the final release, um, were considered quality-wise in descending order. They were great game with Pinball Dreams, reasonably good game with Pinball Fantasies, absolute failure with Pinball Illusions as a trilogy pack. Um, the PC uh, had uh, only on the PC, by the way, an alternate sequel was made called Pinball Dreams 2, which was released in 1995, again by 21st Century Entertainment, like Pinball Dreams was. But this particular one was developed by Spidersoft and was notably a pile of crap. Uh, amongst the conversions for the series was the Atari Falcon, the Commodore 64, of all things. The Game Boy advanced uh, with the title Pinball Challenge Deluxe and with tables added from Pinball Fantasies in the Foot One game. GPR32, released many, many years later. Uh, the Super Nest, most, uh, one of the most accurate conversions actually, including all four tables and near perfect sound. It's one of the better conversions for it. And of course the PC, uh, an inferior conversion due to the technical limitations of PCs back in the early 90s. Yeah, look how far they've come now. I keep saying the Amiga back in the 90s is far superior machine to PCs. And in a way, it's still, if it was still being manufactured today, would still hold its own against most modern PCs. Anyway, here we are with the first part of this episode trilogy. Uh, beginning with Pinball Dreams. See you in part B. Bye, people. <laughs>